Just so the band, if they do need to look at this, I want to say the page is page 58. Pardon me? Oh, eight frames per second. So, so let's just do, how would you write the equation? I'm just going to have you guys try to do this with me. So, okay, let's write the equation for this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So remember the pouches are, we're trying to figure out what they are, right? So those represent the, what does that represent, the three pouches? Right. Right, so write an equation for me. This is 10 over on the left hand side, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So 10 equals. So to solve it, your next step is to subtract the four. Subtract the four because you would naturally say if there's four here, I could just take four away from here. And the way you show that is by subtracting. Six is equal to three pouches. Right, because since there's three pouches, I'm going to make this into three groups. Yep. Okay, so that's showing division by three. So each pouch would have to have two points in. Okay? So that's like yesterday. But when we skip down here, this is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to erase that first. This one's a little bit different when we look at number three. What's different about number three compared to one and two? Yeah, Kaylia. Pouches on both sides. So we're going to jump back to that worksheet from yesterday, but if there's pouches on both sides and they're my variables, can you write an equation for that for me? How about you, Kyle? I know how to solve this. How do you write the equation first? Oh, uh, so it would be 3x. 3x. Equals 2x. Equals 2x. Plus 12. Plus 12. Do you see the difference? There's x's on both sides, like Kaylina said. OK. How did you, how would you solve this, Kyle? So what you have to do mm -hmm. is minus 2x on each side. Right. So there's these pouches would cancel out these pouches. So you treat these these pouches, they're the X's are called like terms. So they they are all pouches or all X's, so we combine them. So if I want to solve it with the picture, it's kind of obvious to see crossing out these two here equal these two so we can ignore them. So that way you show the work is like what Kyle's saying, you you do the work the exact same way we did yesterday but you do it with the X piece instead. So you're right there, Kyle. And then on the left-hand side, because we cross these two out, we're left with what? Just an X. And on the right-hand side, we're, equal, we're left with 12. And that's our final answer. OK? So if you could take a minute to look at the worksheet, note worksheet from yesterday. You had all those notes. Just going to add to that a little bit. Um, I think this next page here. Right here, C and D. Those are the new things we're adding in today. So with the pouches, it's, I think, more obvious to people. But if you think about this, um, it's the same, same type of thing. The difference is there's, there's um, subtraction. But the idea is still the same. We have to get the missing parts together. We have to get those together. Just the way, just like getting the letters together. That makes sense? So Joe, what would you do first? We have to get those together.
Um, well, you could start with the numbers, but I'm asking you to start with the letters. Just because I have a move it around. Okay, so let's go back to this here. When we had the letters on both sides, I had to use operations to get all of the letters to one side. You see how that sort of relates to the pouches? So if we go back to the problem, I want to get, I could, I could subtract the three over. What's another way? That's, that's correct. You could, You could do either way. Okay, good. So either way works. Let's go with Joe's way first, just because that was the first suggestion. Um, it's sometimes a little so harder to work with negatives, but it's always good practice. You want to do plus and n. Well, that was the second way. I, I think I would choose plus and n first, but, but the point is you could do either. So let's try it both ways. Okay. I could do this method. This 3m take away 3m gives me a zero. They cancel. Okay. Or you could say think of this as positive 3m and negative 3m. So similarly over here, remember there's always a 1 when it looks like there's nothing in front of the variable. This is like a positive 1m and a, I mean a negative 1m and a negative 3m. So all together what do we have? Negative 4m. We still have the 8, we still have the 16. So now we're getting more to that two step from yesterday. Okay, so what would you do next? Emma, how about you? Thinking about that rectangle again. What would you do next here? We have to figure out what this is, right? So what is this value? A take away what is going to give me 16? Say that again. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's, you know that this value here has to be minus a negative 8. Is that true? Can you see that? So it's a little harder to go this way. If we do the opposite, we are adding, we have a positive 8 over here. Remember we have to move everything that's farthest away from the variable. So we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. So I have a negative 4m equals 8. So you divide it by 4 then? You divide it by negative 4. Negative 2. So let's look at what Kayla said because even though Joe's correct, that's the much harder way to go. Okay, so the other way is to take that same problem 8 take away m is equal to 16 plus 3m. And Kayla, what did you say? I said to add m. Yeah, if you add m, the opposite of taking m away is adding m. You don't have to handle all those negatives. So you have 8 is equal to 16 plus what, Kayla? 4m. Four. 4m. Four Doesn't that look easier to solve? Yeah. So much easier, right? So Daisy, what would you do next? Remember, we're trying to solve for this, so we have to move what? What do you know about 4M, in other words? 
No, I think we subtract four from each side. Remember, the last thing you want to deal with is this. So you have to handle that 16. You have to subtract 16. From both sides. Because you're adding 16 right now, right? So these cancel out, and you have negative 8 here. And you have 4m here. Then you divide by 2. I'm 4, I'm sorry. And you still end up with negative 2. I'm just curious, a show of hands. Uh, raise your hand if you think the first method was easier. No, but usually there's a few. So raise your hand if you think the second method is easier. Anybody feel like they're both the same? Okay. So most of you seem like you're preferring method, you prefer method two, which is fine. Um, I would say that's really common. So if I took that, I'm just going to shrink it up. If we look at that as our preferred method, um, then let's look at this problem to the right. So that we have the two different methods. I'll just move them over here for a minute. Problem to the right. Let me go back to the show. What would we do this time? So you want to get the move. You do want to work with these, right? Yeah. Would it be easier to add the 5H to both sides or subtract the 3H? For you. Okay. So he's going to use that method. And that, that works. And the other option is that, Evan, can you add 5H? Exactly. You can do both. So if you add the 5H, you get 8H. And then, Joe, you should try subtracting the 3H and make sure you get the same answer. Because it doesn't matter. You just do the way that makes the most sense for you. So, Evan, what would you end up with then on the left hand side? Seven plus eight age. And on the right hand side? A negative, and now a negative one because a negative five h and a positive five h cancel out, right? That makes a zero. So, Kaylina, what would we do next? Um, now we're back to a two step. Well, remember again, we want to figure out what does that have to be. Seven plus what gives you a negative one? Seven plus negative eight. Right? So so I haven't I haven't worked with what's under the box yet. Whenever you move everything away, everything else away first. Because you really know that what's in the box that green has to be, that's what we're looking for. So you, you want to get this alone because that's what we're trying to figure out. So you have to move the constant away first. Okay. So you have 8H is equal to your negative 8, which is what you just told me. So you know it in your head. You just have to figure out the steps to write them. That's true. We're taking a test here. So now what we can do? Because what operation is happening right here? Eight times something, right? So what's the opposite of multiplying? So divide by eight. So h equals negative one. How do we check? Check to see. Right. Joe, did you do it the other way? Yeah. Did you get negative one? 
Okay, let's just add that in here. Let's make sure you can go both ways. You might, you might find that your way is more work than it's worth. Let's see. So you subtracted 3h, right? If you're really good with your negatives here when you do that. So there's nothing wrong with the method. But you have, you have to think of this five negatives and three negatives together make eight negatives. So you'd write this as that's the that's the caution about going that direction. It's usually easier to add. So when you see a subtract and solving, you think of it as a negative on this step two here because you're combining these. So you have to think of what's in front of each term. Now I can keep going. I should get the same answer. I'm going to add one to both sides. I get 8 is equal to negative 8h. So that brings us back to be similar from the other problem, but I'm going to divide by negative 8. Yeah. Okay. So negative 1 equals 8. How can I check it? Okay, Kyle. You go and you just do the multiplication. So I'm going to go to the original problem, and every time I see an H, I put a negative 1, and I check both sides to see if they're equal. Exactly. So this is 7 plus negative 3, which is 4. And this is 1. So here you have negative 5 or subtract, you can think of this as negative 5 times negative 1, or the opposite of 5 times negative 1. It's adding. I put my little negative off there. Does that make sense why that's an add? So off, negative 1 plus 5 makes 4, they match. So it works. So in other words, subtracting a negative, so minus negative 5, you can rewrite it as an add. So I think that we're going to stop there. Whole like